or others disappearing much faster than in a large population. So you have intense selection and rapid random changes. It's uh, potentially a recipe for accelerated evolution, maybe even speciation. Speciation, like a new species emerging. Potentially. And this is where Homo heidelbergensis comes into the picture. Okay, right. Remind us why Homo heidelbergensis is so important here. Well, Homo heidelbergensis is widely considered a likely common ancestor for us, modern humans, but also for Neanderthals and Denisovans. Ah, okay. So the timing fits. The timing fits very well. Their emergence seems to happen around this period or shortly after the bottleneck eased up. And there's other evidence mentioned in the study too. Fossil gaps. Fossil gaps? Yeah. Significant gaps in the fossil record in both Africa and Eurasia right around this 800,000 to 900,000 year mark it lines up, suggest a widespread population crash, not just a local blip. Okay, so that's that's quite compelling. Genetic data, fossil data kind of point in the same way. But let's go back to that number. 12,280 individuals surviving for over 100,000 years. It sounds incredibly specific for something so ancient. It does sound precise, doesn't it? Yeah. So what are the, you know, the challenges? How sure can we really be about a number like that from so far back? Is it more of a, like a best guess based on the model? That's a really important point and definitely part of the scientific conversation around this study. While the number comes from this sophisticated fit coal model that's fast inference of demography right. from coalescent analysis, right. which cleverly uses patterns in our modern DNA to look back, it is a model. Mm -hmm. And models rely on assumptions, assumptions about, say, mutation rates over huge timescales, how populations might have mixed or stayed isolated, mm -hmm. even how well our modern DNA samples actually represent that ancient diversity. It's complex. So 12,280 is the estimate the model produced based on the data we have now. But yes, yeah, some experts question just how pinpoint precise we can be. Okay. There's debate about the moral sensitivity, the inherent uncertainties of peering that far back. And also, was the bottleneck truly global, hitting everyone equally, or perhaps more severe in some regions than others? That's still being debated, too. So it's a powerful piece of analysis, but like all science looking deep into the past, it's an evolving picture. Exactly. It's a testament to what we can learn from genetics, but also a reminder that there's always more to uncover. Still, it's just astounding to think about the sheer resilience our ancestors facing that kind of challenge for so long their survival our existence really is kind of written in our genes because of that it absolutely is so maybe a final thought for you listening what does knowing about this near extinction event way back 800,000 years ago tell you about humanity's ability to survive to adapt and maybe, just maybe, how does that deep, ancient memory of overcoming adversity still echo within us today? Something to ponder.